So back at WWDC in 2023, Apple announced iPadOS 17. And with that, honestly, if you've listened to my first episode of my podcast, The Refresh TechCast, you know that I was a little disappointed overall with where Apple is heading with iPadOS 17. This year kind of feels like a huge catch up year for iPad OS, uh, really just throwing in some features that came in from iOS 16 uh, and really just catching up from there. But I dug through the list of features. I've been testing iPad OS 17 and now that it's out, th here are some main things that can help you increase your productivity with iPad focused on using iPad OS 17. So let's start off with the main thing that they kind of brought up at WWDC and that's widgets on the lock screen. So now you'll have the ability to access widgets and set up widgets on your lock screen. And honestly, on iPadOS, this is a great feature because on iOS, you only have small widgets that can take place right below your clock. Now in iPadOS, you can have much larger widgets actually show up on the left side of your screen, uh, which in my opinion, is going to be huge because this will allow you to utilize apps or even have more apps, uh, third-party developers create more widgets for their apps, which will allow you to utilize more screen real estate on your iPad to be able to get things done. I think the biggest use case for this is gonna be things like quick access to to-do apps or being able to quickly acknowledge lists inside of to-do apps or in the reminders app, which we'll talk about a little bit more in the later part of this video. Overall, it's a really nice change. And honestly, I wish it came with I iPad OS 16 because they announced widgets on the lock screen with iOS 16. And I was just a little disappointed that it took them a year. Uh, and we kind of follow this trend. I'm sure next year we'll see very similar features come from iOS 17 to iPad OS 7, uh, 18. But widgets on the lock screen, it's really nice to have. Widgets in general are just really nice to have on iPad. And that's why next up on the list is interactive widgets. So now when you're on your home screen and you're looking at a widget, instead of launching into the app, you can actually interact with that widget and third-party developers can design their apps to interact as well. Of course, the big glaring thing that you could jump into uh, with a lot of this is being able to acknowledge to-do lists or to-do apps such as Microsoft To-Do and being able to check off lists. Or if you use the Reminders app, you'll be able to utilize that even more. So being able to get more out of your, your home screens uh, on iPadOS I think is going to be great. And I think interactive widgets are really going to take your productivity to the next level because you can have basically like command center screen with everything that you're trying to work on, especially if you're using an external display. Interactive widgets. I think the biggest thing here with interactive widgets that I really look forward to is seeing more third party developers design apps and design widgets that more people can utilize, especially now that you can interact with widgets on your home screen. Next up on the list is PDF handling inside of the Notes app. So this is gonna be a huge thing. The ability to be able to annotate PDFs inside of your Notes app without having to download some sort of third-party app. Now, before you could annotate PDFs inside of the Files app, but now you'll be able to annotate directly and send PDFs directly into the Notes app and be able to annotate from there. So you can use Apple Pencil, you can use typing, whatever you wanna do uh, inside of the Notes app, you'll be able to manage PDFs inside of there and they take up a majority of the screen too. So it's really nice to be able to have this built into iPadOS. And you'll also be able to take your information and autofill. They're doing machine learning and getting better at where those uh, items need to be placed and be able to place uh, contact information directly into a PDF. So it'll save you more time when you're filling out PDFs as well. Next up on the list is enhanced focus modes. With the introduction of widgets on the lock screen, you'll be able to change out your lock screens and have different widgets based on what type of uh, activity you're trying to do or whatever your focus mode is at that time. Let's say you have a personalized focus mode, which you wanna have things like weather uh, and certain things like that, maybe your activity rings and things like that. But when you're at work, you wanna have a lock screen with widgets that are focused on the tasks that you need to do for work, such as a to-do list or the reminders app and things like that. 
So being able to switch between that with focus modes and having focus modes just be even a cleaner experience is going to be overall allow you to focus more on the tasks that you need to or not focus on the tasks that you need to when you're not working on the stuff that you need to work on. Next up on the list is Stage Manager. Now, Stage Manager really depends on the iPad that you have. From what I understand and remember, iPad Pro from 2018 or above will have the ability to utilize Stage Manager as well as the M1 iPad Air. With Stage Manager 2, there's also the idea of external display support, which is completely separate in some ways, but when you're working in external display support, Stage Manager automatically turns on. But the big improvement here with Stage Manager is windowing. So they've gotten better with windowing apps and it's easier to manage your windows and it feels a little bit more natural inside of iPad OS in comparison to kind of the big snapping uh, that iPad OS was doing uh, in iPad OS 16 when they introduced Stage Manager. iPad OS 17 is a little bit more friendly to windowing and it just makes the process a little bit more easier to manage. And in my opinion, iPad OS 17 really does a great job of taking iPad to the next level in terms of multitasking and management of Windows and things like that. Next up on the list, when we're talking about external display support or even just stage manager or even just connecting devices, this is probably one of my favorite things, especially since the iPad Pro that I use still has its front facing camera on the left side or on the right side, depending on how you're holding it. Most of the time it's gonna be on your left when you're using it in a landscape and that's external camera support. So now when you're taking a conference call or you, you're on a FaceTime call, you can use a separate camera or even if you're connected to an external display, you can use a separate camera for that now. And this feature is unlocked a couple of other functions that some people have noticed, but for you, this will allow you to basically try to run a majority of what you're doing on iPad OS, uh, which I think is really awesome. And I think the more we add this function, including the ability to utilize an external microphone uh, as well, or use the camera's microphone uh, that you're using as well, uh, when you're on that call, I think it's just going to continue to enhance the experience of utilizing an external display with iPad uh, and hopefully with uh, future devices too. Next up on the list is Freeform. So Apple has updated Freeform with a couple of other pen options, as well as the ability to collaborate. Basically, as you're creating a Freeform, users will be able to share and collaborate the Freeform and be able to do things more in real time now. Um, which is an awesome update. And I think if you haven't tried out Freeform, it's a great app to really kind of brainstorm ideas. And I've used it in a lot of different ways for brainstorming ideas and really getting ideas out on a list. And then one of the final things that I'm gonna throw into here that's a really small update, but I think is really cool because that, especially since I use this type of layout for my productivity app Notion, and that's in the Reminders app, you can now set up column views which allow you to move your, your items that you need along a timeline or along different columns. And so I would use this for like video production of this channel and of my podcast. So I could say that a video has been recorded and that it's moved on to the next stage, which is that it needs to be edited. And then I can move it to the final stage, which is that it's ready for upload and that it's been uploaded and things like that. But this reminders column will allow you to create tasks and put them into different columns and then create custom columns to be able to manage your tasks. And I think this was a very minor thing that came out, but I think it's a great thing to be able to utilize a Kanban view uh, inside the reminders app. But these are some of the quick things that I think you should take a look at inside of iPadOS 17. Is there anything that I missed? Was there another feature that you're looking forward to? Hey, I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, if you like the video, throw the thumbs up down below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you can learn more about how to get more out of iPad and also link up above playlist of other videos of the best apps and accessories that you can consider to increase your productivity. But Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.